<laughs> Hi, I'm Hank Parker, and this is exciting. I'm going to do a look back, a rewind of old stuff that has been shot for years and years and get to go back and uh, relive a few precious moments. And uh, I'm so excited about this, uh, this whole project, and it's brought to you by Sheffield Financial, who has been a friend to the sportsman for decades. So let's get started and take a look at where we're at. Oh, man. I know exactly. This is North Wilkesboro Speedway. It's just been revived and, and put back together. All of these race teams and all these cars and setups. It's uh, Who is that young guy I'm looking fishing. at? You know, I started fishing about uh, 15 years or so ago, and uh, it's grown leaps and bounds. And that's about the same way with NASCAR. It has really, really grown the last 10, 12 years. Uh, I got a I got a friend of mine out there that drives one of those cars. I guess he's kind of an American hero. Uh, he 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 came up hard. He came up uh, through the little short tracks and dirt tracks, and he drove his way to the very very top. Uh, he, in my opinion, he's the greatest driver that ever got behind the wheel of a NASCAR, and he's pretty well proven that as well. But he's kind I'm of I'm bragging on this guy, man. What, what an awesome look back, and uh, this is my first uh, rewind show, and to be able to go back at North Wilkesboro Speedway, uh, I was up there hanging out with Earnhardt as he was practicing and testing and getting ready to race and he and I, I rode up there with him and that was quite an experience in a suburban. We were taped up and qualified all the way from Mooresville to North Wilkesboro, but uh, we hung out together all day long that day and wow, do I miss this guy. But he's kind of, he's kept his priorities straight, you know, he's got his wife that he's crazy about and they got a new daughter, Taylor, and boy, he's really crazy about Taylor and he's a good deer hunter, you know, and we're real compatible in that area. So I'm really looking forward to our show today. He's going to go out here. We're at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. He's fixing to go out here and win pole position. As soon as he wins the pole, he and I are going fishing. So you stay with us. We're going to have a great show today. I'm Hank Parker. Today, Hank's guest well, is... Well, that was a neat, neat time, man, seeing Earnhardt get out of that car. It just... It's really tough to not, not, not cry. Well, he is such a great friend, man. Mm. Mm -mm. I know half his crew chief, I know Hank Jones, Chocolate Mine. You know, fishing, you, you never thought, when I was a kid, I just had a dream of fishing. I, I just loved it so much. And then you read about Bill Dance and Roland Martin and all these guys and making a living fishing. And I thought, man, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I was able to make all that come true. But the benefit of all that is getting to know all these neat guys, to be able to have an experience uh, uh, with Davey Allison, big NASCAR driver, and Dale and Davey's dad, Bobby, and just so many people. And then later on, of course, my kids all gravitated back to, to NASCAR. And, uh, that's not so good. I'm like the guy in the AA meeting. I can stand up and say, I've been NASCAR free for 11 years. Woo! <laughs> You ask when you hit doubles. Every time I, every time I hook one, you hook one. Yeah, mine's small. Mine's small fish, little, little bitty fish. Bad. Mine's bigger. Make, you make two mine. Wonder why that is. I reckon I'm fishing for quantity. Fishing for quality. Quality, right? That's like good. Well, a man, there you go. You know, it's so funny. Earnhardt, uh, he was a heck of a deer hunter, and. Uh, we deer hunted together. We had a deer lease together for over 20 years in Texas. And uh, we hunted a lot here. I, matter of fact, I got a field on my farm here that was dedicated strictly to him. He didn't want nobody else hunting. We call it the Earnhardt Field still today. This is called the Earnhardt Field. And uh, I never let anybody hunt here. He had his deer stand there. I didn't know when he would come or when he would go, but uh, he would come to Union and climb up there and 
<laughs> as hyper as Earnhardt was, the most amazing thing about him uh, to me, he, he was a d d d d d d d d d. I guess that's why he's a great race car driver. He wanting to hurry up, get to the front. But he could sit here all day long. He would come and get in that deer stand right there on that point of pine trees and watch this field. He'd get in that stand before daylight and he'd sit there till dark over and over again. So this is the Earnhardt field and uh, we never hunted it the whole time that I owned this farm until Dale passed away. This was all left for him. But now we hunt it a lot. I see the old frame, I see the chain, the chain, the old frame, and a piece of carpet. A bow hanger is still there. It's kind of sad, you know, you go through life and you, you meet special friends. And you don't put as much emphasis on how important that is when you're young. Or at least I didn't. I, I shouldn't talk to other people, but I didn't. I didn't really appreciate all my friends as much till I really got in my 50s. And then I really realized that all the ambition you had and all the tournaments that you wanted to win, and for Earnhardt, I guess, the races and all the things, friends were really what was way far more important. And you, you take so much for granted, you know, you want to achieve all this. Young men especially, you want to be a champion and a winner. Man, it's about the people and about the friends. And there's a song out right now that says, tell them how much you love them uh, while you have them, because someday you'll want them back. And boy, I sure would like to have him back. I miss my friends. For many, many years, nobody hunted that field but him. But we're on the water up here and uh, he's fishing and he really wants to win. Uh, he's playing like he's, he's okay, but uh, we're catching fish and he really, really wants to win. Most competitive rascal, he wanted to kill the biggest deer every time. He wants to catch the most fish. <laughs> Even though I couldn't drive a race car worth a nickel, I tried, but uh, he didn't care that he didn't fish every day. He expected to win. I look at this little opening of the show. Bill Landers, who produced my show for years and years and years, uh, from the very onset, Bill passed away two years ago, just a couple of weeks ago, was the anniversary of his, uh, his death of two years ago. And... Uh, we wrote this song, uh, he wrote the music and I wrote the lyrics because uh, uh, I heard it all the time. The house needs painting and the grass needs mowing. Where's he at? He's gone fishing. Do, 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 do. And uh, uh, people have actually put that as a ringtone on their phone. That's how that little jingle just caught on. It's funny how that happens, but uh, special times watching. It brings back so many memories and it's just so much fun for me to sit here and look at this old open. Featuring the only sportsman to ever win the BASS Triple Crown, including not just one, but two classic championships, the coveted Bass Angler of the Year title, and winner of Super Bass 4. I don't know how I'm talking on this telephone, Angie, but this is your husband. If you remember what I look like, I haven't been home in so long, but I'm standing on the stage. Ray Scott, Ray passed away this past year. Back in May, we miss a Ray. Hank's show is brought to you in part by Delco Voyager Marine Batteries. Deep cycling and maintenance free. And by Humminbird. Absolutely brilliant technology. You got Humminbird. Well, I don't know 
if this looks like racing weather to you, but it, it looks like good fishing weather to me. Boy, I tell you, we've got to get this qualifying out of the way where we can go fishing. If this rain holds up a little bit, we'll get some practice in, I think we'll be all right. Well, I want you to win the pole. You think you can win the pole up here? Well, I think we can. You know, it's uh, going to be competitive like always, but uh, we've got a good car here. This is real, really important. Are you nervous? Well, a little bit, but uh, not too bad. I think we'll be all right. Uh, you got it made, I think. I believe you're going to win it. You're going to get the pole out here today, and we're going fishing. The biggest worry is going fishing and catching a big fish. <laughs> well, let's get ready. Right. He was the intimidator, boy. How often you get to pick a guest and he wins the race? That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, they get around it pretty good in a lake like this. I tell you, early morning fog's cold. Pretty warm out here, mate. Yeah, about like being inside a race car. And... One watching yours is gonna get mine. He got his gloves on. <laughs> He's cold. You know, that race car is 125 degrees inside and sometimes more. So they get acclimated to all that heat. He gets cold. He's out there. It's about 60 degrees. He's freezing. <laughs> my two turns when I let you You'll catch me like that. Every time I throw through that, I've caught me. What did I tell you? I told you. Healthy fish. He's gonna get away. He's gonna get away. Look here. That's what they're supposed to look like, isn't it? Is that what we're fishing for? I think that's it. He's too small, isn't he? Too little. Just Pull let's him throw back. him back. Pull him back. <laughs> I want him cluttering up the live wheel that small. Anything over 12 will save, huh? What did I tell you? <laughs> Call the shot. Then you turn the boat so I can't get under it. <laughs> you figured that out. Oh, that's I turned the boat on him. He picked up on that real quick. <laughs> we talk it all the time in the tournaments when we take off. We tell somebody if you get in that curve, I'm going to Earnhardt you. <laughs> flare out, can't you watch him? They just flare out and go down. Golly, bro. It's really when time goes so fast, uh, I remember him catching that big crappie. I called it a crappie. He, ca he called it a crappie, and I called it a crappie. And finally, he, he gave in and said, a crappie. You bass fishing? Crappie fishing. Golly. They call those crappie. Crappie fishing with Hank Parker. Crappie. Look what they it, crappie. Had you had him laying on a plate, would he be good? <laughs> I don't mount this guy. I eat this guy. <laughs> That's one of the best eating fish there. You want to eat him? Put him in live well, Willie. Man, I'm gonna tell you what. Put him in live well, Willie. Eat him. That's probably the biggest crappie I ever caught in my life. Yeah, put him in live well. Do it, really. I'm telling you, it's a nice fish. Where do you go? Three quarters to a pound. <laughs> that crappie will weigh two and a quarter to two and a half pounds. Nah. Yeah, Where's the live well at? Huh? Where's the live well at? Right there, where your reels are. Either side. Yeah. It's still me which side and I'll you got me in there. <laughs> so we better get somebody else. Now don't go away. There's a whole lot more coming up with Hank and his North Carolina neighbor, NASCAR's oh, yeah. Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, Let's look at that. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's big. You know it's hard to believe he was uh he was so competitive and he was such a good guy and looking forward to retiring where he could uh, fish more. He told me the last, just before he died, maybe a couple of months before the wreck at Daytona, he told me, he said, when I retire, Parker, you and I are going to do a whole lot of hunting and a whole lot of fishing. And I said, man, I'm looking forward to that. Of course, he was going to come up uh, in the next year, going to be 50 years old. He said, when I retire, we're going to do a lot of hunting and fishing. He said, I'm going to retire in the next 10 years. <laughs> he loved it. I don't know if he'd ever retire. When it comes to fishing, everything's got to be just right. 
from what goes on the end of my line to what goes in the bottom of my boat. For me, that's Delco Voyager batteries with built-in charger. Chuck Yeager, we're doing a commercial here with Chuck Yeager. I fished with him on many, many occasions. Uh, he was quite the American hero. Set all kind of flight records. <laughs> we had not had transom problems to speak of in the past, but when you really know what you're talking about and compare the full-truded fiberglass transom to the wooden ones that we and everybody else has uh, that have used. The glass is just so much stronger and there's no way it'll rot and it's just there to, from now on. There's no, and just hardly any way to destroy it. Forest Wood, another one of my great, awesome friends passed away. I mean, this, this look back a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be, man. I, as a tournament fisherman, I look for every advantage possible. Here, With the classic spinnerbait, I've got it. Man's Big Company presents Hank Parker's The Classic. 22 karat gold plated samples, ball bearing swell to a thin, super strong wire from maximum fiber. Custom twin tail trainer. Without a doubt, The Classic catches more fish than any spinnerbait I've ever used. Here's one of Hank's tricks of the trade. I'm sitting here building spinnerbait. You know, you think about spinnerbaits and you think about one type of bait or like you go in a store and buy a bait off a shelf and just tie it on your line and throw it in your fishing spinnerbait. Uh, you think about plastic worms, you think about 15 different sizes and 400 different colors and you feel like it's a very versatile bait. But a lot of times we don't realize how versatile a spinnerbait is. Now there's several different sizes, shapes, different blade designs. Uh, I work with a spinnerbait a lot. I fish a, a very transparent bait in clear water, for example. And then I'll fish a very loud, bright bait in muddy water. Uh, and anywhere in between there, I fish a spinnerbait five or six foot deep and I fish one right on the surface. I may even fish one 10 or 15 foot deep. I know in Gunnersville, Alabama this past year, the BASS tournament was one on a one ounce spinnerbait fishing about 12 foot deep over the grass. So a spinnerbait is a very versatile bait. Uh, you can notice today when Dale and I are fishing, we're using a bait that I designed is called the classic spinnerbait. It's got an Indiana blade, which to me is probably the best combination for the most part, say 90% of the time. And I'll tell you a few things about a spinnerbait as a rule of thumb. Uh, I've already talked about you can fish it deep, you can fish it shallow. Well, you know it's a whole lot easier to fish a spinnerbait deep if it has a one ounce head. It's a whole lot easier to fish it shallow if it's got a quarter ounce head. So uh, you've got a lot of different uh, weights or head sizes you can use depending on what you need that spinnerbait for. <laughs> Tips that are 30 years old are still valid. I mean, it's still true today what we were talking about 34 years ago or so. You need to pick out a light bait, something that you can fish on top through that heavy grass. Or if you've got real muddy water and you're wanting to fish it on top, then you'd want to use a heavier bait and use bigger blades to get more vibration. See, that's important, but yet you're fishing both baits on top. That's a good time to use a heavy bait, even though you want to keep it on top, because by using that heavier bait, you can use a bigger blade. That's what Dale and I are doing today. You notice when we fish the riprap, how we fish that bait up on top, but yet that's a three quarter ounce bait. We're putting off a lot of vibration with that weight. The, all those little things are tricks of the trade. But the one thing that I do always is I use a little white trailer. I never vary that. I may fish a chartreuse skirt, or I may fish a blue skirt, or I may fish a blue and chartreuse, or whatever color. But I always use this little white trailer. And I think that that trailer, it works as a keel, keeps the bait upright, keeps the bait running true. That little trailer is probably uh, the best little tip that I can give you to dress your spinner bait up with. And I always use a white one. But I guarantee you, if you'll use that spinnerbait, 
uh, and stay out of the trees. Uh, but realize that that spinnerbait is a versatile bait, just like a plastic worm. A lot of different sizes and a lot of different colors. Uh, and you try all the different sizes, you'll catch more fish on a spinnerbait. Again, that's what he's talking about. I'm pretty impressed with that 30 years ago. A lot younger looking than, uh, than what I see now. Uh, of course, we talked about the hurricane and all the rain that they've had, and it's really filled those lakes up fast. you got a lot of rising water, and the fish are a little bit spooked. And, uh, but yet you have to draw them for a distance because of the muddy water. So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to put out a bait that's got too much vibration when you got spooky. I'm looking at my electronics on this boat. It's amazing how much difference that has A lot of things are still the same, but these little pistol grip rods and these electronics, man, we have come out a long way. I don't think you're competitive enough to race. The old right. Minn Kota commercial, <laughs> black and white. You got that old black and white Minn Kota. Don't let me be behind you on the last lap. <laughs> they say that that is the most feared, awesome, intimidating feeling in racing is to look in the rear view mirror and see the number three Lumina on your back bumper. Well, I hope it does intimidate them. <laughs> That's half the job right there is getting excited. <laughs> getting what they're doing. Then they blame me because I was dying. Oh, that's the one. Today's just pretty exciting. We're passing Mark Martin here. And we'll make it work. <laughs> Come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. Come on, well, I tell you, I've done a lot of uh, a lot of fishing and fish with a lot of different people, and uh, you forget so much. And now to go back and rewind and look back at the good times and the friends, I've often said, you know, you um, you fish and you enjoy, you have a great time. But at the end of the day, when you really count your blessings, you were blessed to get to go fishing. You were blessed to get to be a part of nature, and all of those things are important. But the strongest part of all, and the most meaningful part of all of it, is the camaraderie and the friendships that you make. And, you know, it seems like the outdoors, it just removes a lot of barriers. Earnhardt was a bit of an introvert. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, he got that reputation as a, the intimidator, which he was very intimidating on the racetrack. But... He was short and sweet with his words, and part of that was the fact that he just wasn't that comfortable. Once he got to know you, he was extremely comfortable. You'd talk and talk and talk, and, and uh, he's very, very, very comfortable, and uh, open up and tell you his heart, and you just build such a bond. He loved the outdoors as much as I did, and uh, to be able to share uh, a lot of those emotions just before he died, the year before he died, I spent uh, I spent about ten days with him in the mountains of uh, New Mexico in a tent. Uh, uh, we were on an elk hunt together, and we talked about everything and laughed and cut up and, and had a great time. And and uh, I'm just looking at us in the boat here fishing, and the camaraderie that we had and the friendship that we built so much more important than the fish. But the fish was the denominator. That was the common denominator that drew us together as well as so many other people. Now you can. The original Country Mile or new Country Mile spinning reel. Cast one. Humminbird does it again. TCR, the first high-definition depth sounders. With 455 kilohertz, you actually see more fish in more detail, and even in red. Take control with seven simple buttons. Just snap the TCR into place. This all-new unit design mounts almost anywhere, and the compact TCR sensor makes transducers obsolete. I'm looking at my Humminbird TCR, and it's got a, about a four-inch screen. You know, now I got a TV up there, man. This little guy can't hurt your line, but this big guy can destroy your line. 
So I use Berkeley Trilene. It's super strong. When you buy a Mercury, you own what may be the most technologically superior engine. I'm so you're looking at Hummingbird, and you also Berkeley, something else. Minn Kota, Mercury Apple, the Mercury Apple commercial going on right now. And I've been with these companies for 40 years, you know. This is like our 38th year of television. I'm looking back and we've been there from the beginning. And that's really cool. Good fish. Good fish, you did Good fish. Good Lord. <laughs> Good fish. You didn't give him any time, did you? <laughs> hey. He put a big one right in the boat. boat. Wait. You act like you're in a tournament. Let's see it, too. Smile. A pound and a half. Small. About a pound and a half. I think he'd go pound. That's a good one. All right. And it goes back. <laughs> this is so I was thinking about moving down to the farm. My wife wasn't going to like that at all. Fisher. Kids uh, like it down there? Yeah, my boys do. Of course, there he is. There's a good one, Dale. All right, take You got in there with him, didn't you? He's jabbed in that tree, too, then. He's doing it. Got one on in the tree. Come on now. That's a professional kind of, tree fisherman. That kind of makes you nervous when you're fifty thousand dollars on the line. He's sitting there doing that. <laughs> I it's nerve. like the brother of the one I caught out of here uh, last year. That's the kind that makes you nervous. <laughs> That rascal could cast pretty good. I didn't realize how good he was. He was a heck of a hunter, but he's a pretty good fisherman. He's chunking that old center bait pretty good. Come off them rocks too, didn't he? Yeah, he did, right on the rock. He's going, he's going to the outside bank. He does not like this. Whew. He might go eight pounds, might he? <laughs> think he'll go eight pounds? Well, I think he might. <laughs> He's a pretty good one there, Earnhardt. He's a pretty good one. Fish by him this morning, didn't we? Who? Huh? I was wondering what year this was. I don't remember what year, but I just looked and the sticker on the boat tells the story. It's 1990. I don't know. Eight? Two, three, five. They go right at eight, one. I expect they will. Yeah, I caught the biggest one. He don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Good fish. Yeah. Yeah, big boy. He catching a good man. fish. <laughs> I knew we had a good day, but I don't remember how many fish we caught. Go eat. We got a hold of He's so wrapped up, I don't know. Listen to that line. Look at that fish. He's a nice one. He's a nice one. He's a nice one. I'm going to get him back. Wait a minute, I got the scissors right here. Come here. Now you breaking all the brush out of the lake, huh? <laughs> that wasn't in the water. I got the boat. 
Pretty exciting. I got a big fish hung up. Take the jacket off for you. Uh, I didn't lose. Look at that. Come on. Did I tell you his fish run that stick up? You're just teasing. Well, I was hoping you wouldn't catch him, really. Mm. How about that? Mm. Now, who's keeping score? Me. Don't you wish you could catch one like that? When you get older and more experienced, Dale, you <laughs> When I get to be the fishing magnet, you are, I'll be all right, huh? Boy, you ought to see me drive a race car. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I told him, I said, you ought to see me drive a race car, and he just said, woo, he didn't want no part of that. But I actually raced against him at, uh, I, I raced a bush race at uh, Rockingham, North Carolina. I didn't race very long, I crashed, but, uh, uh, matter of fact, I think he finished second in that race. Mark Martin may have won it, and he finished second, but uh, I was out there for a little while, I just didn't laugh very long. Best of all, each meets extraordinary demands at a very ordinary price. You know, my idea of the perfect bait casting reel is one that casts with no effort at all. Line peels off the spool like it's in perpetual motion. Now, I've never fished with a reel quite like that, but this new Ambassador XLT comes mighty close. In fact, I believe I can cast farther with this reel than any I've ever fished with before. Just imagine what this would do on a fishing rod. When it comes to fishing, everything's got to be just right. From what goes on the end of my line... I just saw a Forestwood commercial, Ray Scott, Lefty Cray, Dale, man, there's more people on the other side than there is on this side. That's one thing about getting old, man. No other batteries get on board my boat. There's a lot of good friends. Major batteries are available at everyday low prices at Kmart across the USA. Compared to the noise of a gas outboard, any electric fishing motor seems quiet. But some electrics still frighten fish, while Minn Kota doesn't. No wonder three out of four fishermen choose Minn Kota. For the quiet power that catches fish. Same one. No, no. <laughs> I call the the same That's why he gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> you good, Hank. I'm telling you. Yeah. I knew you was good back in 81. <laughs> I knew you before you was good. <laughs> when you thought you was good. He's bragging on me. He said he knew I was good back in 81. This is 1990. It was nine years ago. I think that's when I met him. No, I met him in 77. So I, know I met him way before 81. 81 is when we fished together really for the first time. to be able to make a living doing what you like to do, but to have the opportunity to fish with one of your heroes, NASCAR's all-time great. I tell you, Dale, I enjoyed it, buddy. I enjoyed it, man. I appreciate it a lot. You're a good guy, too. I'm a better guy than I am with fishing. Uh, hey, I appreciate you being with me today. God bless you. I'm Hank Parker. And he's Dale Earnhardt. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Impersonating a fisherman. <laughs> That's pretty neat to catch a big fish like that. <laughs> Hank's show has been brought to you in part by Berkeley Trilee. So you had to be, you had to be real careful when you fish with Dale. I fished with him about five or six times when we made shows together. But you didn't want to get too far ahead of him. If you got too far ahead of him, he'd quit. He'd go back to the race shop. So you had to kind of uh, let him stay, hang with you. But in this particular show, I remember this show. Uh, uh, as soon as I saw it, I, I recognized North Wilkesboro and the racetrack and. And uh, I remember how much fun we had, and I remember riding up there with him. I drove to Mooresville. He lived in Mooresville, and, and 
I drove to Mooresville and got into Suburban with him and, and rode up to North Wilkesburg. We hung out all day, went out to eat, and uh, I don't remember if he sat on the pole or not. I think he did. And uh, he came back and he went, won the race, and uh, we, we went fishing and uh, had just an incredible time. But I didn't remember catching as many fish as we caught, and I didn't remember him catching that many fish. He, he hung in there, man. He capped that spinnerbait. Uh, it was impressive there, and I'd kind of forgot about that. Now, I, I was kind of used to when we hunted together. He, he'd kill the biggest deer just about every year. Now, he just had, he had that going for him, and uh, he had eyes like no one I've ever seen. I, I've never seen anyone that could blood trail a deer as good as Dale Earnhardt. Man, he'd say, oh, there's blood, and I'd say, where? And he said, you don't see that? Are you blind? It'd be just a little pinhead, a speck. How, how he saw that, I don't know. But uh, I was pretty much used to him outdoing me on, in the woods, but I didn't realize how good a fisherman that rascal was. He, he did a great job. And to look back at 1990 and fishing with the world's greatest NASCAR driver and hanging out, uh, this whole look back series is going to be a fun thing for me to do. And I'm, I'm emotional here uh, because I lost a great friend in Dale Earnhardt. And uh, according to his own testimony, I will see him again one day and it probably won't be too long for me. I'm getting to be a very old man. So I'm looking forward to having a reunion in heaven so wow how awesome it is to be able to do these look backs and these fantastic memories and it is just so special to me and i appreciate you being with me like always god bless you <laughs> i'll see you later on i don't know if it'll be next week but i'll see you later on i'm hank parker I had just thrown in there. <laughs>